an active university student presented to our clinic with complaints of bilateral knee pain, worse on the right, and a secondary complaint of left hip pain after hiking Mount Olympus. This is what we found on her knee. The first thing I like to do is find out where the joint line is, that is where the tibia meets the femur. So we're gonna flex and extend the, the leg or the knee to find that joint line so we can see it's right here. And then I'm gonna observe where the kneecap is relative to that joint line. So that again is the joint line. You can see the top of the kneecap here. As I bring this straight across, you can see that that kneecap is almost entirely above the joint line. So we refer to this as patella alta. Okay, it's higher. And because it's on the femur side, as the knee bends, it's gonna put a little bit of pressure on that femur. It's gonna act kinda of like a caliper or a brake pedal, uh, preventing you from getting the motion that you want, okay? Now, the next thing we're gonna look at is knee tracking. Now, she has a history of a knee surgery, a meniscal surgery, and she had a patellar dislocation. And they did what sounded like a lateral release. We haven't seen the, uh, the, the report from that yet, but she's had some dislocations and uh, she described the procedure as being performed on the outside. So we're gonna push down on the kneecap and I've warned her that it might be uh, a little painful um, and she might have some apprehension or difficulty in contracting that quad. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a fist underneath the knee to keep a little bend in it. We never wanna push this into hyperextension. And as we apply downward pressure, we wanna make sure it's S to I or downward pressure, not A to P pressure. So we're gonna push down. Now Molly, would you tighten that thigh muscle for me? And you can see that the kneecap jumps over that outside. So that is what we call an excessive lateral pressure syndrome where the vastus lateralis is really dominating, the VMO is not activating, and the kneecap is not going straight up like it should, it's coming over to the outside. So that's gonna be a big source of her pain, both the position and the tracking issue. Now we're gonna compare that to the other side. And again, the first thing we're gonna notice is where the joint line is here. And we can see that's the top of the kneecap. So much more of that kneecap is below the little bridge that I made with my index and my thumb. As we come across, we can see that there's actually portions of that kneecap below my index finger. So this position is much better. And then we're gonna do the same test. We're gonna push down and then tighten that quad. And a little inhibition, a little difficulty in her contracting that. But we'll try it again and go. Good. And we can see it goes pretty much straight up. So that's a normal test compared to that uh, right side. Now, well, we're gonna look at the foot okay. and see if there's any foot contribution to, to this. And we're gonna push the ankles forward and we can see there's a marked reduction in the right ankle rocker, right? And a lot of times we're gonna see a shallow fossa comparatively. And it looks like there's a little bit spongier of a fossa on the left and then less so on the right. So that tells us that that talus is rolled forward or anterior, creating less space or less fossa. And we can see that the foot's a little bit more plantar flexed than that of this one. And then a lot of times there's gonna be some tenderness on the inside. Now tell me, is there tenderness on the... Mm -hmm. There is, right, on this side, correct? Yeah. yeah, okay. So now we're gonna look at one last thing, and then I'll stop and try to explain these things to you and, and play back that video if that's helpful so you can see what's going on. So we're gonna bring this up. And we're gonna extend the big toe and we're gonna plant the big toe and then we're gonna extend it again. So that moves really, really well. Then we're gonna do the same thing here and we're gonna extend the big toe. So that moves really good. And then we're gonna plant the big toe. So planting the big toe is simulating you walking around, okay? So when you walk around, that big toe should be able to extend just like you could feel with that one. But when I do this with my thumb pressure, that big toe doesn't wanna extend at all. So that's gonna put twice the amount of force on the knee. So this is goal number one, is get this ankle rocker back, try to get this big toe extension back so that we're at, at least not putting twice the amount of pressure on the knee, okay? So we're gonna try to do that today. One other little interesting thing is you'll see, if you compare the callus formation on the bottom of the foot, so we look at this one, and we look at that big toe there, and then we look at that one, you can see there's much more callus formation on this one. That's because you're not making ground contact here. So you're trying to toe off down here and get you the motion that your body's not giving you here. You're trying to get it down there. All right. So let's go over a quick home care for the big toe because this could be helpful. I want you to do these two things at home. I want you to rub on the inside of this uh, foot or big toe on that muscle for about 10, 20, maybe 30 seconds until it's sore. Now it's usually going to be more sore on this side with, with that limitation than it is on that side. Yeah. You feel much softer yeah. that feels, right? Yeah. So do that to your tolerance. 
And the next one, I want you to go in between these two digits, and I want you to rub and move that way. I can see you kind of flinch, right? Yeah. You can feel that. Now, if we compare that to this side, big difference, yeah. right? Okay. So sometimes after just a little bit of self-care, like that and like that, we can go back and we can plant the toe and we can see that it wants to spring a little bit, right? And you can hear a little mm -hmm. click going on there. So the good news is this is totally functional. It's, I think we can improve this really, really quickly by improving the mechanics at the bone here, the talus, and uh, maybe the bone down in here so that we can lift the arch, take the tug off this tissue down in here, and then restore that motion. Okay. This is great, and you're young enough, you're not developing any kind of like nasty you know, bunions and yeah. those kinds of foot issues. And we want to get this healthy so that the knee stays, stays healthy.